Comedian Josh Ostrovsky tells the full uncensored story of walking in on Diddy, spooning Felix to house cat. Check this out. Is there anything that you want to talk about that? I want, uh, I want to talk about. You want people to know about. Oh, I don't know if the story that I have about P. Diddy is a thing. Oh, that I'd people love, know I'd about. love it. You, you think it's something we didn't talk about it on the show, but you told us off the show. Should I just tell you? Yeah. I mean, okay. I'd love to. I mean, listen, this isn't alleged because you, it happened no, to no, you. No, no, no. There's nothing alleged about this. Okay. It is alleged. <laughs> <laughs> clap, 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 clap. Golf clap, golf clap, golf clap, golf clap. We clap. are comedians. <laughs> All right, I'm go for it. We're so lonely. So, um, <laughs> so I'm fucking goblins. I went to a party on Star Island in Miami uh, where P. Diddy has a private residence. I mm-hmm. had no business being there. Mm-hmm. I was with a famed uh, house producer who was DJing the party. Sure. And I will keep his name out of it. Yep. And I took a whole bunch of ecstasy because everyone there was taking ecstasy. It was basically me and like beautiful like ethnic models, mm-hmm. like just beautiful women who I obviously had no interest in because like, yeah. that's it's a, like, the big pimpin' video. That's not my type. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we're gonna stick to Peppa, please. Yeah, we're gonna stick to yeah, Peppa, Peppa and and ghouls from Us Weekly. <laughs> right, right. Um, so I'm, I'm like kind of stumbling around. It's like you know, it's all like you know, my man is telling me that like you know, every third person is some executive. Mm-hmm. You know, got behind the scenes guys who I don't recognize. It's a high end crowd. Very high end, and okay. there's no joke. There's maybe a hundred people. Okay. I mean, it is intimate. It's a serious. I have serious no business being there. Sure, I'm in like a you know like an old Jewish grandmother's windbreaker, like <laughs> I am now right, at right. this exact moment. <laughs> right, and um, so long story short, I am on ecstasy, and I'm trying to find the bathroom, mm-hmm. and I can't find the bathroom, and, and I just kind of like go down a flight of stairs, and now I'm in like the inner windings of the mansion because yeah. most of it's going down by the pool. Okay, you know cabanas and stuff. Well, dragon's lair. Yeah, get dragon's lair. Yeah, we're getting serious. So I get lost. <laughs> And I'm in like just a maze of rooms. Yeah. Now I'm looking for the bathroom. I start opening doors. One's like a closet. One's a room. It doesn't have a bathroom in it. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, every room should have a bathroom in it. That makes sense. First if of all, if you're in this fucking every dungeon, room should yeah, have, right. every house. Should so have, I open yeah. a door, and in that room there are a bunch of men, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're all kind of like very like Romanesque, like laying about. And, you know, kind of like very like kind of leaning on each other, not really spooning, but like conversationally spooning. Like if you were spooning, but facing each other and like leaning up on your elbow and like, talking. Like, how about this? Like in public watching TV with a bunch of your friends and you're with your girlfriends. Right. Yes. It would be like those guys kind of lounging on their girlfriends, but they're not fucking because that no, would be weird they in public. Fucking, right. but like you almost think that they should be feeding each other grapes, oh. you know, stuff like that. Okay. Like it was very a like regal lounging. Very erotic. Okay. All right. The heavy erotic. Yeah. Like, uh, like the drawings you would see of like old Greek. Yes. Uh, right, hangouts. Exactly. Yeah, I or, like a, or like a fat Greek woman like laid on her side. Yeah, it you would know? almost be the prelude to an orgy. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Oh, oh my god. Oh okay. my god. It was so prelude okay. to an orgy. So explain. So, so I look. So I have. I'm there for a very brief amount of time because I open the door and clearly I'm not supposed to be in there. And I look, and who is lounging in my direct eye line? Puff Daddy hmm. and Felix the House Cat, famed house music producer. Yeah. No, I know are who that is. Basically spooning each other. <laughs> I swear to God, they're basically spooning and they're drinking a glass of Hennessy. And they're like sharing it. They're like passing it back and forth. And everyone's talking. And everyone's just like talking. Yeah. And then as soon as I see them, I'm like, all men though. There's not all one men, woman in this room. All men. And yeah. they're all, they're all 100% on ecstasy. Like you can see Diddy's in like white linen being like, oh my, oh God. my God, like rub eyes on my nipples. Right. You know, like, <laughs> right. oh, you're one of my best friends. Right. So the minute I make eye contact with him, like a gigantic bouncer comes over and says, get the fuck out. Because a lot of people turned and looked at me because it was very unexpected that like a fat guy with an afro, right. with, like no shirt on basically, like a, an open windbreaker, <laughs> right. opened the door to like this like, you are kind of a buzzkill. Definitely. If I'm on ecstasy and right, getting no. ready for a gay like, orgy. Oh, this guy. <laughs> oh, he looks like fucking uh. Juliet Jean Shaladin. <laughs> Do you know? So, um, but I looked right at Puff Daddy and he looked right at me. Yeah. And we made direct eye contact. And, I got kicked out of the room. Sure. So that was that. Yeah, fast. And obviously so, crazy. Fast crazy. forward. So I was like, P. Diddy's clearly on ecstasy, and he's, yeah. he's clearly gay. Yeah. So fast forward, right? We're at a junket for a movie that he was in. Uh, someone is interviewing him. I'm in the back as a friend of someone who was there. Mm-hmm. I'm all the way in the back. I'm behind a million publicists, a million people. But you see him. Well, he's being interviewed on and the And you're thinking about it. Oh, I'm thinking about it the whole time. Yeah. By the way, anyone I ever told the story to was like, oh, you're a liar. I don't think you're a liar. Everybody was like, you're a liar. Like, I'm sure something happened and they knew I was on Star Island. Like, that was verified yeah. by the other person I was with. Sure. But people were like, you're a liar. You didn't see them sharing a glass of Hennessy. Like, you didn't see Prelude to like an orgy. Like, this is bullshit. Like, right. you're being funny. Like, fat juice hilarious. Sure. So, um, a couple of people said they believe me, but I think they were lying. So, <laughs> um, he looks, he's being interviewed in the middle of the interview for this movie. 
I mean, I'm sure you can guess what movie it is because I think he was only in a movie, right? Um, at least recently. Yes, he literally stops the interview and he points at me all the way in the back and he goes, "Yo, you, my man." And everyone in the room turns around and looks at me and he goes, "Where do I know you from?" Oh no! And then I go, "Miami." And he goes, "Oh, true." And we locked eyes again, and he knew that I knew that he knew that I knew that he knew that I knew <laughs> that he drinks the milk of other men. Wow. I, this happened. Has anything happened since? No. Nothing. There's been no follow-up. Were now, you nervous at all in like a Breaking Bad kind of way that maybe people were going to be sent to your house or something? Like, a oh, 100%. Because I'd be a little nervous. See, now, what, what I'm doing to combat that yeah. is by talking about it publicly on, on and then you're, podcasts. Yeah, because this will come back. Right, and, yeah. right. Because yeah. I'm most safe if I talk about it publicly. That's so crazy. Right. Because now people know yeah. that I've got dirt. Yeah. So, like... I need you to hold this podcast. No, it's down. it's archived. Yo, this is gonna be some Jason Bourne shit. No, You're I know. Have it on like a tiny microfilm, <laughs> and they're gonna be chasing you across. What a Europe. great movie, though. What a great movie of you running around the country, scared that your gay, no, no, your gay vision. No, better movie. I get killed. Okay. You're running around the country <laughs> with a tiny microscopic <laughs> size um, thing of this podcast, <laughs> and they're trying to get it from you, right? Because if they with a she- baby doll, an asshole. <laughs> Run the whole way, running. It's inside of a baby doll. It's in the <laughs> eye it. of a baby doll that's, that's in your asshole. No, no, it's a baby. I put it in the baby doll because if I get in trouble, I could put it in my asshole you because you ass. taught me about baby dolling. Any, honestly, we could pitch this podcast. Scott Rudin. I, I don't know if he listens, but we could pitch this we to could, the Weinsteins, we Rudin, this, Kevin, anyone. We could walk this podcast right into Paramount. Now, for those that are um, prim and primed in the ways of the petty, I guess that is as obvious and cut and dry as it gets. I'm not even going to pretend like I have my degree from Petty University because I didn't even attend the first class. So I, I just say, you know, keep it betwixt yourselves. But that's far less interesting, isn't it? I mean, call it like it is. Either way, whose side do you guys take? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice. Mm-mm. No, sir. You tell me. Who do you more believe? And with that question posed, I suppose I'll get up out of your space. We've been Dirt TV Celebrity Media. You guys have been great as always. Keep it locked here for the latest stories, the latest breaking news, and the latest updates. You know we got you covered, baby. But still, do me one small favor between now and the next time you hear my voice. I can't sing. Shut up. Be safe at all times regardless and we'll see you next time peace